In this premiere episode, Phil leaves his Dusseldorf apartment to catch a flight from Dusseldorf's International Airport to New York's JFK on a short business trip where he was planning to meet a potential client, a distributor in New York whom he hoped would begin importing his olive oil brand and perhaps his olive leaf tea. But this trip will turn out to be quite a bit different to what he had planned. Let me explain. It started out as just a short business trip to export his olive oil. Today, Phil is flying on an Airbus A340-300, one of his favorite aircraft. This jet airplane has four engines that can propel passengers at speeds up to 552 miles or 890 kilometers per hour. It has a wingspan of 197 feet or 60,30 meters. Sorry for babbling on about the Airbus, but it's a real star of aviation technology I'm fascinated by. It can fly as high as 41,000 feet or 12,500 meters. When its tanks are full, it has a flying range of 7,626 miles or 12,300 kilometers. Given that the distance between Dusseldorf and New York is 3,748 miles or 6,031.82 kilometers, this plane can practically make it back to Dusseldorf without even refueling. Phil travels quite extensively and he flies first class as often as possible. The first class cabin is spacious and inviting. It looks like there are eight seats in first class today, and only three are taken. There are times when Phil is the only passenger in first class. It's always better traveling with someone because there are more opportunity for suspense, and suspense is what keeps life interesting. A lot of people think he looks like Samuel L. Jackson. Looking like Samuel has helped him to get into some pretty amazing places. It was a cold day in Dusseldorf when he took this flight, so the plane had to get the ice before taking off. Phil already felt the excitement of flight and his love for travel. Phil felt like he was in heaven, or about to be launched into heaven at least. He kept staring at the cockpit controls, wondering how anyone could master all those buttons. But they were already in the clouds, and those huge jet engines were pushing them towards that 550 miles or 890 kilometers per hour. It's time to return to his seat in first class. He was taking this flight at Christmas time and Lufthansa decorated the cabin for the holiday spirit. Lufthansa always has the prettiest friendly stewardesses. He's always amazed at the variety offered first class passengers. But what amazes him most is that you can order things like roasted goose or grilled steak. How do you grill a steak or roasted goose on an airplane?
he has never had beet and cheese combined. He tries the oxtail soup. It doesn't taste like no oxtail I know. It tastes like wildebeest. He really doesn't know what kind of meat it is. It could be reindeer or ostrich. But he can certainly tell you what good olive oil tastes like. He has tried more than 700 brands of olive oil. I have to tell you about one of his pet peeves when flying and in restaurants. It's when they put the grapes right next to some type of stinky cheese. I picked up one of these and I decided, well, I'll put it in my mouth. And as I tried to put it in my mouth, I could smell the smell, coming to find out it was the cheese. It stinks. It's funny how you can get bored on long flights, even in first class. He was looking out the window when the captain came on and made an announcement. It seems that there were blizzard conditions in New York and they will be lucky just to land. Phil might need to stay at a hotel at the airport rather than going straight into New York City to meet his potential client. It's amazing how beautiful it can be up here, yet how miserable it can be down there on the ground. When they got to New York City, it was impossible to see. Snow was swirling everywhere. Everything was white. And then he learned the bad news. It turned out that his potential client was driving to his home from his office in Midtown Manhattan in the middle of the blizzard and got into a huge accident. The roads were more slipperier than Phil's olive oil. His secretary called Phil and said the meeting had to be cancelled because he was in the hospital pretty banged up. Phil felt sorry for this man he had never met. He thought about the cases and cases of olive oil he has in his warehouse in Spain. He was wondering what to do next because he was counting on this distributor to make him an offer. But Phil is not a worrying kind of man. He believes that any day you wake up in bed, it's another great day to be alive. When he feels a need to inspire himself, he gets on a plane and head out traveling. Anytime Phil can travel, meet new people, see new sights, eat new foods, speak a different language, or learn something new about life, he jumps at the chance. That's why he started this food and travel video blog and uses the olive oil from his wife's olive estate as the perfect excuse to get on a plane. Once the blizzard in New York cleared, he decided to enjoy his visit in the United States. He flew from New York down to Miami, Florida, where it was warm and he could escape the cold of New York City and visit Captain Albert White. When Captain White first saw Phil, he thought Phil was Samuel and invited him to cruise the waterways of Miami where tourists and natives can get a front seat view of the hundreds of exclusive homes belonging to celebrities and the super wealthy. He spent the afternoon on Captain White's boat and was relieved to be away from the cold of New York and to be in sunny Miami. While in the captain's wheelhouse, he showed Phil all the buttons and dials. Once again, Phil was reminded how little he knows. He cannot imagine how a pilot or captain can remember what all these knobs are for. Just give Phil a simple olive tree, the symbol of peace and wisdom ever since the Greeks, and he's a happy man. The captain's first mate was a beautiful young woman whom Phil never have expected to be the first mate of this enormous tour boat. After returning to the dock a few hours later, Phil felt like a new man. The fresh ocean air, the smell of the sea, and the sights of people from all around the world enjoying themselves. These are, to him, what counts in this life. Phil used to live in Miami long ago. He keeps an apartment here for his children to use and for when he comes for a quick visit. He never heard again from the poor fellow in New York he was hoping to sell his olive oil to, and now he is both his wife 
and thousands of bottles of olive oil with her image on them to remind him of his love for her and the fact that he had to get rid of them. So it was time for a new game plan. In the next episode, Phil hitches a ride in first class of Lufthansa's Airbus A380 inaugural flight from Miami to Frankfurt. He then travels to the quaint village of Neuenkirchen where he is invited to the local annual parade and into the kitchen of Chef Lorenbeck before heading back to southern Spain. I hope you'll come back and join me for his next adventure. Stay tuned as you never know what you'll encounter when you travel with Phil Stone. What's the difference between the restaurants and cafeterias? Well, I suppose maybe the speed at which you get your food. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Remember, leave me a comment on this channel and I'll reply as soon as I can. Tell your friends to watch. The next episode will be uploaded once we have 500 views on this episode. Subscribe today and be among the first to know when a new episode is uploaded. And may you travel well and find happiness in everything you do. I'm the Olive Branch, your host of Chapters of a Love Story. I'll see you then. Bye.